I aim to motivate and inspire viewers to see the clothes they wear as an expression of their personality and their beliefs. This is the Slow Wardrobe. Come and have a look. Hello. Welcome to episode 28 of the Slow Wardrobe podcast. My name is Linda and I'm your host. This week is an episode with a real twist. I'm not going to be opening with a knitting update because I just don't have enough to update you on. And that's partially because I took a week's break and a little bit about that right at the end of the episode. But before then, a long section on layer cake that is very different in its approach as well. I hope you're going to enjoy it. It was good fun making it, although it was a lot of work. Rather than me talking to camera and explaining what I'm showing you, it's a long sequence of photographs that show you lots of different layer cake outfits. And it's because I wanted to show you how you can consider building your layer cake wardrobe. So I've sectioned all the different layer cake garments in four different groups. And I've literally grabbed one garment in a different color, lots of different colors, not coordinated. And I'm showing how you can combine those. So if, for example, you already own a smock or a tabard and you're not sure what you could combine that with, then I'm showing you how a smock or a tabard look with other garments in the range, what kind of lines they create together and how they look in some cases in very contrasting colors and other cases very coordinated colors. As always, let me know what you think of it and whether this is of use to you. And I'll follow on from some of the ideas that I got just filming this and talking over the top of it because it's got a voiceover of me explaining what you're looking at. And I will pick up on some of those ideas in future episodes. Any ideas that you can give me, of course, are always welcome as well. So let's get stuck in. Enjoy watching how to build your layer cake wardrobe. To give us a starting point, I've split up the layer cake collection in four groups of different styles and different types of garments. The first group is tops, then bottoms, then over pieces and full length pieces that cover a large part of your body. They can still be worn in combination with others. It's just an arbitrary classification to give us a starting point as to how to talk about the collection and how to combine garments. If we look at the first group in detail, the tops, there are the smock, the tabard and the apron. Let's look at the garments by themselves without showing them in combination with other layer cakes. Here is the smock. It has points down the side, an A-line, kind of curvy A-line shape and fairly large armholes so it can be worn over the top of other garments. In that respect, you can classify it as an overpiece, of course. But like I said, those classifications are arbitrary. It's just to give us a starting point. The second top is the tabard. It's got the same large armholes, the same large pockets, but it's got its points at the front and back rather than the side. And the shape of it is slightly less, less curved and more of a straight A-line. What we often find is that either the smock or the tabard suits a particular customer best, although there are those who can wear both styles. Then there is the apron. It's a bit of a different animal from the other two. It's got more of a straight bottom. It's got big splits down the side, which you can see in the photograph. Apologies for the pale legs. <laughs> you can see that I have not been in the sun, <laughs> at least not with the bottom half of my body, all summer. 
and it also has a uh, dropped back with crossover straps. I'll show you that in detail in some of the la later photographs. Then there are the bottoms. There are three different bottoms in the Layer K collection. Two trousers, the high lows and the baggies, and one skirt. I will now start showing those bottoms in combination with the three tops that I've just shown you in the first bit. So here are the high lows, the long version of the high lows in combination with the smock. I'm wearing them full length here, but you can play with that with high lows. Hey, look at this. See, they are now cropped and that's because I've tied them up inside. That's what you can do with high lows. You can vary their length. Comparable to that tied up length of the long high lows is the full length of these regular length high lows. So this is the regular length high lows worn full length, which is cropped on me. And then you can still tie them up to make them shorter the way that I was showing you with the longer version. I'm wearing them here with a tabard to show some variation. And that's the cropped high lows in combination with that same apron that I was showing you before. I'll show you now how different the silhouette is to wear cropped trousers with the apron compared to full length trousers by swapping out these high lows for the long length ones. Look at that, a completely different look just by making the trousers a bit longer. Of course, another trick to lengthen the silhouette of any outfit is to wear the same or a similar color top and bottom. You can immediately see that you then don't get a line cutting across you the way it did when I was wearing the brown cropped high lows underneath. And here is that same outfit in the back. Apologies for the see-through top that I'm wearing with the uh, bralette underneath, but this is purely to show you how the apron sits in the back with those crossover straps and then cutting just above the waist to make a nice waistline. Moving on to the second style of trouser, these are the baggies. In this case, in the moth color and worn with a smock. You get that lovely effect of the rounded sides of the smock and the rounded sides of the baggies, as well as that arch shape in the middle of the smock and then repeating that arch shape at the bottom of the baggies as well. However, they don't look any less effective in combination with the tabard. Point front and back, like I said before, and a lot of opportunity to show the rounded shape of the sides of the baggies because, of course, the sides of the tabard are higher up, are a little bit shorter. So you see a little bit more of the baggies when you wear a tabard instead. And here they are in combination with the apron. Again, a lovely bottom to wear in combination with the apron and quite a different look from the high lows that I was showing you before. The baggies also come in two different lengths and I'm wearing them here in the longer length. Some people love them cropped, but I tend to wear them long. And this is the third layer cake bottom the skirt, just like the high lows and the baggies, the skirt comes in two different lengths. And uh, just like the baggies, they come in two different widths as well. It's got a walking pleat in the front and it's meant to fall all the way down to your ankles. Same skirt, same color, the charcoal in combination with the tabard. And you will notice that the 
kind of flared shape of the skirt, the A-line shape of the skirt follows the shape of the tabard very nicely. And you see a little bit more of the skirt, just like what happens with baggies, for example, when you wear them with a tabard because of those higher sides. And here is the same skirt shown with the apron. When shown from the side, you would see that the apron's got those high splits down the side. So it's a nice combination with a long skirt underneath because you end up seeing quite a lot of the skirt, especially when you turn sideways. It didn't occur to me to take a photograph of that, but I'm sure you, I'm hope, I hope you can imagine. The third group of garments are the overpieces. Bit of an arbitrary title again, because you can argue that a smock and a tabard and uh, an apron for that matter can be worn as overpieces as well. It's just to create a starting point of, to talk about the collection. We've got the mini tabard, the tail smock, the duster, the synergy top, the step top and the jacket. Let's look at them in a bit more detail. Here is the mini tabard. I'm showing it over the top of the smock worn with the skirt. In this whole next section, I keep wearing the skirt to try and keep that part of the outfit neutral and then showing the different over pieces in combination with the smock, the tabard and the apron. So next up is the tabard. In combination with that mini tabard, you get that beautiful double V, which can be extremely effective in contrasting colors as shown, but it can also be really interesting in uh, the same color. So you could make this entire outfit charcoal, for example, the charcoal skirt, a charcoal tabard and a charcoal mini tabard. And it's fabulously effective. Last but not least, the apron. Surprisingly, the apron works extremely well as well with the overpieces. And that's something that not everybody thinks about because of the bib at the front and the straps at the back. It's not something that people think of as a garment to wear underneath, but as you can see, it works extremely well. I'll show you the back as well. Of course, the straps get covered so you get more warmth, but the bottom half of the apron ends up working like a second skirt in combination with the long skirt underneath. So all three of them together are a fabulous layer cake. Moving on to the tail smock. Firstly shown again with the smock and the uh, skirt. And I'll show you the side and the back of this as well, because you can see that in the front, you end up with an outfit that consists of three thirds, the tail smock at the top, the smock in the middle and the skirt at the bottom. But what happens on the side? You get this lovely silhouette because the length of the tail smock corresponds with the tips of the smock at the side. So you get the different fabrics and colors playing with each other down the side of the garment and the way we cut the tail smock you can still easily get into the pockets of your smock underneath. I'm turning a little bit more now so you can see the back. As you can see the tail smock has a gathered section in the back just above the waist to give it extra swoosh and swing and that's what everybody's always doing when you put a tail smock on you just want to twirl. It's a very twirly garment and it can be worn with or without, without other layer cakes, of course. Showing that same tail smock again in combination with a tabard, no less effective. And again, that nice combination of lengths and points dipping down the front and sides. Clever little extra idea with this outfit is to combine the outfit with a mini tabard in between. Using that contrasting color on purpose to show how effective that can be. So we're seeing 
a skirt, a tabard, a mini tabard and a tail smock over the top of each other. Great outfit for when it's colder and again a nice opportunity to play with different colours. So here you see the difference when you remove the mini smock again and just have that game of thirds again with the tail smock, then the tabard and then the skirt. See what happens in combination with the apron. Uh, the back of the tail smock is very similar in length to the middle back of the apron. So they work really well in combination with each other. And again, maybe a combination that you wouldn't think of. If you have both garments, try them out and see how they sit on you. You may be surprised at how much you enjoy wearing the combination of a tail smock and an apron. Next on the list of overpieces is the duster. I'm showing the short duster first. That's the front view in combination with a smock. And we've made given the duster a length so that, again, you can very easily still reach into your pockets if you wear it in combination with a smock or a tabard. And this is what the back looks like in combination with the smock. That lovely swingy A-line back slightly longer than the middle back of the smock. And here's the short duster with a tabard. Of course you get that swooping line down the side of the duster while you have the line coming up from the middle front of the tabard which makes for a really cool shape in the front. And that is different when you then look at the side because of course that swooping line down of the duster on the side then kind of follows the line that goes down the side and back of the tabard. So I love those different lines that they either come together or move away from each other and the silhouettes that makes depending on the color combination that you wear. If I turn a little bit further you can see what I mean with that swooping line of the duster going down and kind of following the diagonal line of the tabard. They really strengthen each other. So rather than contrast, like what you got with the smock, you get um, uh, lines that follow each other with the tabard. Of course, with the apron, you get a completely different look again. And it's more of a look of contrast because the squarish bottom edge of the apron contrasts very strongly with the swooping line of the bottom hem of the short duster, as you can see very clearly here at the side. So let's compare with the long duster. You can see that the longest point of the long duster is of a similar length to the longest point of the smock here. And just like with the tail smock, the duster just invites you to swish. Here you can see that it's a really gradual lengthening of the hemline from the front to the side and then slightly longer again in the back and following the length of the different layer cake garments so that they can all be worn together. So here it is with the tabard. And I forgot to mention, both with the shorter duster and the longer one, that it's got three quarter length sleeves and that it's one of our one size fits almost everybody garments. Both the shorter one and the longer one can be worn with by a very wide range of sizes. When in doubt, do check the measurements on the website or give me a call or drop me an email. Meanwhile, we're looking at the long duster in combination with the apron. And again, you can see that their lengths are coordinated. Moving on to the next overpiece, the Synergy Top, Synergy Step Top. It is a step top that comes to you without sleeves and that front panel that you see at the bottom wouldn't be there at all because both the sleeves and the front panel get knitted by you, the wearer of the garment, or you leave them off altogether and wear it as a sleeveless overpiece. 
showing it here first with sleeves and the bottom piece just with the skirt and then putting the smock in between to show you how those different lines and different layers play with each other. Because of the big split that you end up seeing between that extra knitted front piece and the back panel of the Synergy top, it's again easy access to your big pockets and if I show you from the other side you can again see how the different layers and the different lines of the outfit play with each other. For, from my perspective, this is really layer cake at its best. Having those different lines, those contrasting colors and shapes play together to great effect. And speaking of lines, here is the Synergy top with the tabard. You can see that the shortest point of the tabard is very similar in length to the longest point at the side and back of the Synergy top. That's one to remember again as well. It's not by a coincidence that they have come out like this. Let's have a look now to see what a Synergy top looks like in combination with some of our bottoms. Here it is with the long high lows. And this is the same Synergy top worn with the regular length high lows. And this is what it looks like with a pair of baggies. So these are the moth baggies in combination with the white Synergy top. Let's have a look at the step top. Quite a stunner in this color and a really nice contrast, of course, with the skirt. You can see that the front panel just about stops where the top of the pocket of the skirt is. So again, easy access for your pockets. And then I'll show you by turning around what the back looks like. Really nice and swingy kind of line again. And another one size fits a very, very broad range of people from a UK size 10 all the way up to a UK size 28. Showing it here with the smock. Loving the different lines again and how they play together. And this is what it looks like with the tabard. I love how the point of the tabard peeps out of course in the back as well and the sideline of the tabard, the side hem of the tabard pretty much matches the longest point of the step top. And here it is together with the apron. The straight lines of the apron and the straight lines of the step top of course match each other really nicely and create a repeating pattern of lines across the outfit that I think is really effective. And again you can see here the coordination between the height of the pockets of the apron and the bottom of the step top. I hope you're not getting as impatient as I'm starting to look in these pictures. Only joking. This is the step top with the long eyelows. I think it makes for a fantastic silhouette and especially with these kind of contrasting colors. It's a very striking outfit. Going for contrast creates, of course, more drama. And here it is with the cropped high lows. Cropped high lows or tied up high lows, of course, are a lovely way of showing off a pair of autumn or winter booties, for example. When I filmed this, it was very warm outside, still at the beginning of this week, hence the absence of wintry shoes. Meanwhile, I've swapped over into the baggies in combination with the step top, coordinated pocket line again, and a really nice combination of a very boxy top and then very loose flowy trousers at the bottom. And now last but not least, the fourth category, the full length garments, three of them in total, the play suit, the overalls, and of course, the dress. Starting, of course, with the play suit, a pretty unique garment. You put it on over your head like a dress and then zip it up at the bottom between your ankles. We're showing it here in a color steel, which is a light gray and black cross weave. And just like all the other layer cakes, it's got beautiful rounded li lines, quite similar to the smock and huge pockets, of course. 
Here I'm wearing the smock over the top of it and you can really see those rounded lines. It's also very clear in this photograph that the bottom half of the play suit has a very similar shape to the baggies. That's no coincidence, of course. In a way, a play suit is a combination of one of the layer cake tops together with a pair of baggies all in one garment. Swapping over here to the tabard and you don't get those two arches of the leg line and the bottom of the smock, but you get the contrasting lines again, which I think is just as lovely. It just makes for a different silhouette. And again, you could easily swap out the play suit for a pair of baggies if you don't want that full length layer underneath your top. So moving on, still wearing the play suit, here with the apron that is in the black gingham, you can see in the picture that you then get a very subtle color difference between the black gingham and the steel. I love those kind of subtle differences. The other thing that you can see is that you get the round neckline of the play suit with the square neckline of the apron over the top of it. And the edges will be peeping out and of course, on the back, you will end up with the back of the play suit and over the top of that will be the crossed straps of the apron. And with these kind of su subtle color differences between the two garments, it makes for a really nice combination. And in case you're wondering why I keep staring at my wrist in some of these photographs, it's got nothing to do with impatience. It's because I use my watch as a self-timer for my camera to take the photographs and in some cases I get the timing wrong and whatever and then you get these photographs where I'm in st staring at my wrist and in some of them they actually really show off the garments quite successfully which is why I've kept them in. Meanwhile I'm showing the play suit here with a mini tabard and of course a mini tabard is relatively short and this on the sides it's only just over your waist. So it is then in some cases quite nice to wear a full length garment underneath it. Same goes for the long duster. The long duster in combination with the play suit make a fantastic elongated silhouette. And of course you can either go for contrasting colors or subtly different the more coordinated your colors are, the more chic and sophisticated the look is that you'll end up with. And I'm planning to spend a future episode on showing those kind of contrast and coordinations in more detail. Okay, second full length garment, the overalls. I'm wearing them here in the red cross weave. They are full length on me, but they can easily be folded up at the bottom or even shortened. They've got a very, very deep hem at the bottom to give them extra swing when you walk. Here they are with the smock, really nice long and lean silhouette. You can see that the bottom of the overalls are not quite as voluminous as the high-lows and we're working on another pair of trousers that will have a similar line to the overall bottoms but are regular trousers so they will form an alternative to the high-lows that are not quite as wide for those of you who are looking for a sleeker silhouette like this. Same goes for the combination of the overalls with the tabard if you've got both garments, you may not have thought of wearing them together, but as you can see, it works fantastically well. And because the overalls are just tied at the top of the bib, it really isn't a problem to wear one of the layer cake tops over the top of it, as you can see in this photograph. And this is another combination you may not have thought of. Overalls with an apron over the top of it, playing on purpose with the contrasting colors by pulling the ends of the straps of the overalls out over the top of the apron. I think, again, this is a surprising and extremely effective combination of two layer cakes on top of each other. 
And here are the overalls with a tail smock. For those of you familiar with the overalls, you may be aware that the waistline is nipped in of the overalls to make for a nice sleek look. And of course, it's heightened as well. The waist of the overalls ends above your natural waistline. And in combination with the tail smock, which is just goes below your natural waistline, the two look really nice with each other because the tail smock makes the overalls look like a pair of high-waisted trousers. And of course I have to show the overalls with the duster as well. Here is the short duster, nicely coordinated pocket height like with all the other garments. And here is the same on the side so you can see what kind of silhouette the long lean legs of the overalls make with the sweeping line of the short duster on top. And that long lean silhouette of the overalls is accentuated even more if you wear them with one of the long dusters. All those vertical lines make for a really nice silhouette and um, a, a really cool outfit. Whether they're contrasting colors like shown here that you can then bring together of course with uh, accessories that have both the blue and the red in them or you could go for a more coordinated color and have very similar even the same fabrics for the overalls and the duster. And last but not least the overalls combined with a step top. I think this is a particularly effective silhouette if you are shorter in stature and then the, the leanness and the long leg effect of the overalls is accentuated by the boxy lines of the step top in the front. And then finally here we are with the layer cake dress. I'm wearing the regular length dress here in the bitter lime color. I more often wear the longer dress because I really like <laughs> all of my clothes very long. Nothing to do with hiding my body. It's just the silhouette that I really enjoy. But I do switch it up. So here's the regular length dress. And here it is in combination with the regular length high lows. So if the regular length of trousers are what you normally wear, then you get an idea of how much of those trousers you would see if you would combine it with a regular length dress. This is how much of the trousers you see if you combine the regular length dress with the long high lows. And here are the baggies. So we've got bitter lime in the dress and moth in the baggies. I think it's a fantastic color combination and one of the reasons that they go so well together is that both fabrics share the moss color. They both have moss as one of their threads and as a result they look great together. Beautiful autumnal color combination. The rounded line of the baggies follows the rounded line of the dress really effectively. And here is the dress in combination with a long skirt. Worn like this, the dress almost turns into a top just like the smock and the tabard are. And that's accentuated by the fact that I'm wearing the longest skirt with the regular length dress. However, even if you would wear the regular length skirt with the regular length dress, they still look really good together. And that's the main thing that I wanted to show here. And then last, but by no means least, our little layer cake jacket. It's a bolero type jacket that is supposed to be worn right on the tips of your shoulders, as you can see. It creates a very striking silhouette and especially worn with longer pieces underneath. It's a very effective way to top off your layer cake. I haven't given it much of a feature in the overall program because I think <laughs> we've been going for long enough on this. But uh, let me know what you think of this explanation and whether it helps you oversee the both the, the layer cake collection and different ways of wearing the garments together 
and whether it's given you inspiration as to how to build your layer cake wardrobe. And then to finish this episode, just a couple of minutes of sharing some of the photographs with you in the footage that I shot last week when I had a one week break. And that at least in part explains why this episode of the podcast is a week late. If all goes according to plan, I'll be back two weeks from now.